Hi, welcome to a video from the New South Wales Volleyball Referees Association. My name is Sam Chan. Today we are explaining the key indoor rule changes that came into effect from the start of 2022. We hope that all participants, not just referees, will find this video useful. First, before we begin, a disclaimer. Just to be clear, these are our interpretations of the new rules. The official governing bodies, Volleyball Australia, the Asian Volleyball Confederation, or FIVB, may provide different interpretations later in the future. So, what are the main rule changes? The main rule changes relate to centerline penetration, blocking over the net, and positional faults on service hit. These three we'll cover in more detail through this video. The other changes are that exceptional subs can now be made on expulsion or disqualification, Liberos can now be team captain, and the Libero uniforms can now differ from each other and the rest of the team. Let's look at penetration under the net. To touch the opponent's court with a foot is permitted, provided that some part of the penetrating foot remains either in contact with or directly above the center line. That is the same as the old rule, but they've added this bit, and this action does not interfere with the opponent's play. So what is the key concept here? If your foot is touching the opponent's court, you cannot interfere with their play at all. So if the opponent, opposing setter trips over your foot, even though you have part of your foot on or above the center line, it is still a fault. The old rule wasn't clear on this, and they put the wording in just to make sure it's a bit more clarified. Now, let's look at what's changed with blocking. Before, you couldn't block the ball past the net at the same time that the opponent hit the ball. Now you can. That is the key change. Another way to look at it is the game should continue unless the blocker clearly touches the ball before the attacker. Let's watch a video of a simultaneous block over the net. Here the blocker has touched the ball at the same time as the attacker. Under the new rules, it's play on. Now let's move to position faults. Rather than go through the rule first, which is quite wordy, let's discuss the key concept. The rules modification document says that the changes were made to allow more flexibility for player positions at the service hit. Another way to consider it, let the game continue unless players are explicitly in the wrong position. So what has actually changed with the rule? Well, the new rule says each back row player must be level with or have at least a part of one foot further from the center line than the front foot of the corresponding front row player. So what does this mean? In the picture, we have a typical receive position for the setter in position one, the back person, and standing behind the outside hitter in position two. The new rule means that as long as the green line, which is part of any foot of the back row player, is behind or level with the red line, which is the front foot of the front row player, then it is fine. Let's compare the old and new rule side by side. You can see for the exact same positioning of the players, the buffer is much greater. Under the old rule, you compared the front foot of the front player with the front foot of the back player. Now you compare the back foot of the back player with the front foot of the front player. So for referees, you can see our points of reference have changed now. That might take some getting used to. But the other thing that's clear is the gap between the lines is now much bigger. That is what is allowing more flexibility. So if we take the interpretation of the rule even further, in this picture, the back row player has one foot clearly in front of the front row player. However, the back foot is still behind the front of the front foot of the front, front row player. Quite a mouthful, but it's easily shown by the lines. The green line is still behind or level with the red line. So it is okay. That is the added flexibility that these rules bring. So 
There's an official diagram on page 66 of the rules that show this in action. The back row player's feet are depicted in blue and the front row player's feet are depicted in white. You can see when the back row player's feet are behind or in line with the front foot of the front row player, it is correct. That's the left and the middle diagram. And on the right side, it's a fault when they're clearly in front. So there was another addition to the positioning rule, which is the bit in red. The position of players are determined and controlled according to the positions of their feet contacting the ground. The last contact with the floor fixes the player's position. So the way that we interpret this is that if the back row player lifts their back foot, and that is they're still running or their foot is still off the ground at the moment of the service hit, then where their foot was is what is being counted. So even if that back leg has lifted and is all the way forward in front of the other player, as long as the serve is hit before that foot touches the ground again, it is still okay. So if that is the correct interpretation, you can see there is much more flexibility in um, the position. One thing that we haven't talked about yet is the service hit. So there is a common misconception around. We'll try and clarify that at the moment. So when is the moment of the service hit? Let's look at the server. So the moment of service hit is when the server contacts the ball. This is important because you get the sound cue of the ball being hit. So the second referee, you should be looking at the receiving team positions and having the server in their periphery. The reason why we're clarifying is because sometimes we see a misconception that when the server throws the ball up or tosses the ball, the setter starts running or thinks that's, that's the moment of the service hit. But clearly, the moment of the service hit is when the ball is hit, not tossed. So, now let's look at the changes to the horizontal positions. We just looked at the front and back row positions. Again, a reminder of the key concept is to allow more flexibility for player positions at the service hit. Without going into the wording, what this new rule means is that the side player has to have something closer to the sideline than any part of any foot of the other two players. So in the picture, the player in position one is closer to the sideline than the furthest part of the players in position six and five as signified by the red line. That is quite a bit of leeway. Similarly, on the other side, the player in position five has part of their foot closer to their sideline than the furthest part of position one and six. Quite a bit of buffer again. So if we compare the old and new rules again, the left picture is what it is under the old rules. So under the old rules, you needed to check that the play in position one was closer to the sideline than position six and vice versa for five and six. And the buffer there is quite small. But for the players now standing in the exact same position, the buffer is quite big. And also the points of reference again have changed. So, this is a common serve receive position. If the setter is in position four, the middle is in position three, and the outside is in position two, they're the front row and they're all stacked to the far side. We see this a lot. Now, the setter who's in position four can have one foot all the way to the inside of position two and three and is now legal because they have part of their foot closer to the sideline than the furthest part of position three and four. Again, with the last contact with the floor interpretation, even if, in this, if the setter in four had started running and had their back leg in the air when, at the moment of the service hit, then it is still fine. Again, you can see this on page 66 of the rule book in their official diagram, which shows various scenarios of where a fault is occurred and where it is not. So in summary, the player can't penetrate the center line, that is touch the opponent's court with their feet and interfere with opponents. Blocking may now be simultaneous with the attack hit. Positional fault requirements are now relaxed. Exceptional substitutions can be made on expulsion and disqualification. 
The Libero can now be the team captain. The Libero uniforms can differ from each other. Finally, some useful links. You can find these in the description below. The FIPB website, the AVC website, Volleyball Australia's website, and of course, Volleyball New South Wales website, where we can be found. If you'd like to contact the association directly, if you have any questions or you'd like to get more involved with refereeing in New South Wales, please contact us at secretary at nswvbrefs.org.au. We thank you for watching this video. We hope that you have found it informative. Happy refereeing. Joel, and then you'll die. <laughs>